Hello crafty people and welcome. Today something completely different. I have been uh, recently working in clay to make my own jewellery and here's a couple of pieces that I've made. This is um, like a, a brushed sort of antique version of uh, a silver pendant. Um, as you can see it's got kind of stippling on the back, some nice little ragged edges and some vintage lettering in there. And I wear this one as a pendant. And then this one is the one that I love the most at the moment. This is my coral reef bracelet that I've made and I absolutely love this one. Took a lot more work than this one but uh, it's my favourite. So if you like the look of it I may do um, a tutorial on this in the future, just let me know. Today however I'm going to show you how to make a pendant very similar to this one and it is so easy. These ones are actually made from air dry clay. Um, I only had one pack of that and it had been in my stash for such a long time and I thought right I must use it and this is, these are the results. Today I'm going to do for the first time polymer clay and hopefully I can make something very similar. So what we're going to do today is try and make a pendant similar to this one. So first of all we need a surface to work on. I'm working on a nice glossy ceramic tile so that my clay doesn't stick to it and then we'll need to be able to roll our clay out into a sheet and let me give you a little tip. A lot of the time you'll see people using um, pasta machines. If you don't have one of those make yourself one of these. These are just playing cards and as you can guess these are two playing cards stuck together and they're quite thin for when you want a thin sheet of clay and then I've got sets of three, four, five and six and then obviously each time there's five cards in this stack so a little bigger, six in this one is a little bigger. If I wanted something really thick like nine I could do a four and a five together or a three and a six together and get a thickness of nine. This one, oh cat hair, I'm going to use um, a six so I put a six stack on either side of my clay and I've got one of these acrylic rulers with all of the materials that I'm going to use today. You can find them all on my kit.com page or you can find them on the link. Um, oh, the cat is hitting the, rubbing himself against the camera. Or you can find them on the links underneath the YouTube video. So use the drop down box underneath and you'll find all the links to the materials. If you don't have an acrylic roller, anything will do that's kind of smooth, that's not going to leave, even a pen, that's not going to leave an impression in your clay. And I'm just going to roll this piece of clay out. Oops, a little bit of sticking is very, very hot in here today. So my clay is a little bit sticky. So I'm going to roll that out, six cards thick, easy as that. Next thing we need to have is some kind of stamp or impression for our clay. A good thing with clay, you can use things that are really small, so you don't need to buy huge stamps. Lots of things around the house will make impressions in your clay, but this is the one that I'm using. It's a little stamp, uh, like a vintage lettering stamp. I got it on Blitzy. I love Blitzy um, because not only are all their prices discounted but there's free shipping everywhere in the world. So for me out here to the Cayman Islands, providing I order $50 they will ship whatever I want entirely free. So it doesn't matter how big, how weighty, it will come out to me free which I love. So this one as you can see is uh, just a regular stamp that you would use for ink and I'm going to use it to make an impression in my clay. So it's got like a vintage lettering and I can decide which way up I want it. So I'm going to have it facing this way. And you can either um, put it on the, pre on the clay and just press it down in with your fingers like that. Or you can roll over the top if you like with your uh, roller or you can do it the other way. You can press the, uh, put the stamp down on the tile and then put the clay on the top and press the clay into the stamp that way. Either way, I'm just going to pick it up and check my impression. I want to do a little bit more. I'm going to press it a little bit harder. So the, um, the thickness of your clay is obviously dependent on how thick you'll be able to get your impression without it going all the way through to the back. Let's see. Okay, that looks good. I'm happy with that. Let me bring that up. So you can see, because with it being black, it's not very easy to see what's happening with the black clay just here. So I've now made my impression in the black clay. Now on the original one that I've made, 
I had torn the clay to make these kind of jagged edges and if you like you can do that. This time just for something a little bit different I'm going to cut my clay into a rectangle shape. So I've got one of these uh, blades used for cutting clay but you know an X-Acto knife or a ruler or some kind of straight edge will do. So I'm going to cut that there to make my top. And then follow the sides of the stamp there to make my line that side. Here. And here. Let's see when I pull the pieces away what kind of size that is. I think it's a little bigger than the one I've already made. Yes, it's really not quite rectangular either. I need to straighten that top edge and then I think I'm going to make it a little bit narrower let's take some of that edge off and then obviously you can play about with it um, for whatever size you want if you want it rectangular or square or circular you know use a, a cutter or a template or some kind of stamp or something um, accordingly so there we go there's my rectangular piece so this clay is still good. I'm just going to stick that back in my little Ziploc bag and we can use that for something else. In fact, we will use it in a minute for making the bail on our, on our piece. So now because I've been pressing on it, it's probably stuck really hard to this tile. So I just need to get my blade underneath there and start lifting this up. There we go. So because it was stuck down quite hard, I've distorted it a little bit picking it up. So again, I'm just going to trim those edges, give it a little nudge in to make it rectangular again. And there we go. Now at this point, if you want to do any further shaping, you can. I think I'm just going to round those corners a little bit just by popping my blade around like that. Let me zoom you a little bit closer now so that we're working a bit closer to the uh, to the piece. There we go. So now I'm just taking the, uh, the blade and just popping a little bit of a curve into those corners. There we go. That's all we need. And remember you don't have to make yours like this. You can make yours irregular. Just tear the clay if you want to like my original one. If you want it to look more of a, a vintage style you can tear it as well. So that's that finished but of course I've used a black clay and I really want it to be silver so I'm going to use this this is a metallic silver powder any of the kind of pigment powders or mica powders and things will do and if we add it into the to the wet clay and then fire it um, or bake it then the pigment is going to bond into our clay now because I want the detail to be black I'm going to try and just put a little bit of the powder on the flat of my finger and rub it over the top so that it doesn't go into the holes. We will see how I get on with that. I can see how beautifully, just a tiny little bit of powder, it really accepts the powder beautifully into the clay. And uh, this, this silver is magnificent. I absolutely love this product. I use it in resin, but it also works beautifully here in, um, on clay. I need a little bit more. And this little jar is going to last me forever. A little bit of this stuff goes a very long way. So I'm doing it very gently, just so that the um, only the, the top is silvered. And uh, I'm leaving the, the relief parts in black so that we can see the lettering. Now we're getting a nice finish. A little bit more. Okay. Last little bit. Okay, I think I'm happy. Let me pop that to one side. And I'm just going to go and wash my hands so that I don't get the silver on the other parts that I'm working with. So that's the front part of the pendant. But I also want to texture the back. So I'm going to take one of these, just like a, a kitchen scrubby. Just hold it like in my hand and just texture over the back. And it provides this um, lovely kind of texture to the back but it's nothing too regular it works perfect for a piece that's got this kind of vintage feel to it 
There we go. That looks good there. Okay, so now I want to make a bale for my pendant so that I've got something for it to hang on. This other one, I put the um, bale on the back, but I think with this one, I'm gonna put it up on the top. So I've got a little piece of regular straw and I need to uh, roll a little bit of extra clay. I'm gonna make it a bit thinner because I don't need to press on it for an impression for the, um, for the stamp. So I'm just going to use number four and take a little bit of clay. Oop, I dropped a bit. And just make it a little shape a bit like this one. Push it down and give it a roll. Okay, so there we go. So I'm going to just straighten those sides a little bit and make it about the width that I want my bale to be. There we go. And if I make a straight edge, and just start to lift that edge up a little bit, I can wrap it around my straw. all the way around till it touches and now because I want my bale to be on the top I need a little piece down here to attach to the pendant itself and I'm just going to what shape shall I cut it into like a bit of a, a curve slight curve that wasn't very curved in the end was it okay let me uh, make it a bit more curved my straw's a bit in the way, it won't let me make much of a curve. Okay, but it's got enough, enough of a little curve on it so that it's not completely straight. And again, I can just tap those corners to round them off a little bit. Okay, that looks good. A little bit of stuff stuck in the clay there. Well, that doesn't matter because I'm going to give this also the same vintage kind of finish. Now I can use the uh, little brush and the little scrubby and just kind of scrub over it a little bit like this. See, I'm not doing it too, I'm not too bothered about what it looks like. I might even knock up those edges a little bit so that they're not straight and perfect anymore. Lift it up. And just do the same around the back. Okay, that looks good. And now we can just pop this back down and put my pendant on top. Now what I'm going to bring over now is my baking tile. Because I keep one tile for working on, then this is the one that goes in the oven. So if I just pop that down just here, straighten it up a little bit. That looks good. And then I can pop the pendant piece down on the top. Center it over the bale. Gently press down to make contact. And then that bale sticks to the back of our pendant. Now at this point, I've moved it around a little bit so I can go and just touch up any bits of shape that I need to. Push that corner in a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little bit of extra texturing into some of these areas. I like to use these ball tools for um, manipulating the clay and making little textures. Um, again, I'll provide a link where you can get these kind of things. I'm gonna use this one just with the little tiny tip there and just put a few little kind of marks into some of these areas. Give it a bit more interest. There we go, a little bit around here and I could even do the same up at the top on the bale I might just put a little line of dots just here just to tie the design in a little bit 
And now I think I'm happy with that. So you need to look at the instructions. Oh, I was going to put a little bit of silver on my bail, wasn't I? I'm going to do this with a brush this time. So I have this raggedy old paint brush, which is quite stiff. And I know when I use it on clay, it gives a really nice kind of brushed metal look. But it's also good for just adding a little um, dash of the silver over where I need it to be. I'm just going to brush this over here. And again, it adds a little bit to the texture. Put a little bit down in there. Okay, that I like. So let's lift up and put some silver on the back as well. So to vary the texture a little bit, I think I will put this on with a brush as well. And just show you a bit of what it looks like. If I brush it on, it almost looks like a, a kind of steel. You get um, a very lined look to it. So here we go, so what it looks like so far. I'm gonna now pop this in the oven. The clay comes with instructions on it for how long you have to bake it. So I'm gonna put this one in for about half an hour and then I'll uh, show you what it looks like when it's done. And here it is, taken out of the oven, and I've now put it onto a black cord. And you can see it has a lovely, lovely shine to it. I really love this silver metallic powder. It's great. So looking at the um, impression that I made, I think I pressed a little bit too hard and I rocked my stencil, um, rocked my stamp just a little bit too much and I kind of made a, a slightly double impression. Over here, if we can get the camera to zoom in, slightly on the left hand side where I hadn't pressed the stamp so hard, I got a, I got a, a nicer look. Here I think it's a little bit, um, a little bit too heavy with the stamp. So I think what I'll do is go in and just add um, a little bit of extra silver in here and then just take away the, the high contrast a little bit between the black and the silver. But otherwise I think I'm really happy with it came out. There I think you can see here that on the side where I hadn't pressed the stamp and up at the top where I hadn't pressed it quite so hard, it looks a little bit better than in the center area here where I pressed it a little bit too hard. However, it makes a really nice pendant and I've also got a little bit of clay left over. I've made myself some matching little earrings and this is, if we compare, this is the original one I made and there you can see with the, um, the rough kind of finished edges. So there's the two of those side by side. I hope you've enjoyed this little uh, foray into something a little bit different today. If you like big and bold jewellery then give, get a little bit of polymer clay and experiment with it because uh, you can make yourself some really nice unique designs that are just exactly what you like. I really like bright um, contrast or striking metallics or big bold jewellery so I'll definitely be making more of my own polymer clay jewellery in the future. Thanks very much for watching and I hope to see you over on the channel again very soon.